Howdy, Blaine Smith here. And this can mean only one thing. Well, it can actually mean several things, but this time it means one thing. It's Overkill Reviews, Bangers Weekly Metal Review Show. Boom. If you like our content, we'll help you get subscribed, liked, all that stuff. And hey, if you want more stuff all the time, consider supporting us on Patreon. It helps us crank things out. And the more money we get, the more things we can make. Because capitalism. Hey, this week, it's weird. Just, here's a clip. guessed it, but also probably you didn't guess it. That's right, it's Kaijo Hano and uh, Sumac with, uh, even for the briefest moment, keep charging this expiation, plug in to making it slightly better. Out June 28th on Trost Records. So this bio is tricky because it's a bunch of guys coming together from a bunch of things with a bunch of the mm. So you've got Sumac, which is in and of itself a uh, sludge supergroup. So you've got Aaron Turner of Isis and Old Man Gloom fame, joined by some uh, metal adjacent dudes, very skilled mercenaries at their instruments. Uh, you've got Brian Cook of Russian Circles and Nick Yakushin. Yak, 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 I've never been able to pronounce his last name, despite being a very big fan of his drumming in Baptist. And then uh, on the flip side, you've got uh, Kaiji Hano, who's a, um, hmm, uh, a Japanese man. So I guess he was formed in 1952. Um, he's an avant-garde musician who's done a lot of things, too many things to list. The amount of people he's collaborated with look like the total list of members for any Floridian death metal band. It's a lot of people. So this is the gang's second time collaborating together. The first time turned out great. but. This is improvisational music, so it's going to be weird and different every time. Can lightning strike twice? Let's find out in a review. The easy standouts for me are the drum and bass, both in performance and in how it sounds engineer mastering wise. It really sounds great. It provides a good level for everything to kind of sit on, no matter what wacky nonsense is going on above it. That's there. It's a foundation. It's a bedrock to keep things nice and stable. Brian Cook's uh, bass has an extremely low and thick tone to it that really helps counteract some of the higher registers that this hits when they're doing their wacky stuff. It's sort of like having some heavy cream on hand for when you're eating spicy food. Spicy. It really has a foreboding sound that wouldn't be out of place in a horror movie. And the end of uh, Now I've Gone and Done It, I've Spilled Holy Water, Just Water, over that healing thing called music. There was a faint noise. Uh, the end of that, uh, it really provides like the meat of it, and it's probably my favorite portion, section, the excerpt of the album. I don't know, this thing is four songs ranging from five to 30 minutes. It's difficult to talk about normally. Unsurprising to anyone who's watched Baptist Rain City Session drum playthrough on YouTube, Nick Yashin is still a beast. His drumming is very organic and provides a nice feel to stuff like this. His accenting especially is, is, is really nice. You know, you can kind of, you can really feel the distance between his sticks and the snare when he's going ham. And I find myself kind of rolling along to it a lot of times. And uh, it's really great, like at a, in, the, in about the 10 or 11 minute mark of, uh, even for just the briefest moment, keep charging the expiation, plug into making it slightly better. The title track, um, he, uh, he, he provides a lot of fun to it. And then when he finally gets to uncork later in the song, you know, he's very good at being a very big drummer. So, super cool stuff. But he doesn't really get to let loose that often on the album, which is Surprising, considering the first time these guys got together, it was this big, loud, cacophonous racket with them all going ham. And uh, this time I'm not sure what it is. I mean, I guess maybe I'm dumb for expecting two improv albums to sound similar, but, ah. 
but it's not particularly drony either, which I would have been totally fine with. I mean, there's certainly drone parts on uh, now I've gone and done it, I've spilled holy water, just water over that healing thing called music. There was a faint tisk noise, and even for just the briefest moment, keep charging this expiation plug-in to make it slightly better. Uh, and uh, first half, once, twice, thrice, uh, when you press the third time, carve esteem and desolation into your heart. Second half, even historical scar has been lined up uh, at regular intervals, but their uh, permeation is different, beautified with a lost spray. Um, uh, track four, let's say. Starts and kind of has a drony feel to the whole thing, but there's some really high feedback that snaps me out of any sort of drone vibing, and there's also a tapiong so hmm, that we need to talk about. Yeah, so there's a tapiong so, which is a Korean reed instrument that's uh, a bit of an acquired taste, we'll say. Um, it can produce some really interesting sounds and has a very distinctive warble, but that warble and those distinctive sounds aren't really found on the album. It's kind of just a, when it's used, is just a super high, sustained, painful note. And it kind of really ruins uh, interior, 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 space, disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. And uh, I'm not doing that again. This gag's getting old. Track four. Uh, it really kind of ruins both those songs for me. Again, maybe I shouldn't have gone into this with any expectations or excitement based on the first time they worked together, but the first time they worked together, I enjoyed it because I got a coherent kind of thesis. I understood what was happening. I understood what they was going for. Uh, this time, for the life of me, I can't figure out what it is. I mean, even the title of the first uh, album, American Dollar Bill, Keep Facing Sideways, You're Too Hideous to Look At Face On, it's a better title. It's a title that I understand. It's entertaining and poignant. And this, uh, I don't, I, I just don't get it, man. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not some high music theory guy. I didn't go to Berkeley's school of my dad was a musician, so I turned out a little weird. Um, there might be something complicated and unique and interesting going on here that I don't get, but it also might be a little bit of that uh, 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 glasses on the floor of a museum. You're walking through a museum, there's glasses on the floor. You're like, oh, I think somebody dropped their glasses. I should probably pick their glasses up. And then you're like, wait, are those their glasses? Or is that art? I wonder if it's art. Oh shit, is it art? Am I gonna get in trouble if I touch it? Maybe I should take a picture. I'm gonna take a picture of this because maybe this is super awesome art and then you take a picture and then someone standing beside you is like, oh shit, I thought those were glasses, that's art. Uh, it's hard to know when things are art or, <laughs> or just glasses on the floor. Um, so maybe something's going on, but I also feel like I'm the exact type of person who would lie about liking this. I just got back from Japan. I think Earth Pentastar is one of the five best albums ever made, and I'm pretentious enough to have said this phrase. Yes, I, uh, I saw James Chance when I was living in Paris. Uh, I should be the perfect storm to be on board, or again, fake on board, but I just can't get on board, which really hurts me, because this is the first time I've disliked anything any of these people have done separately, together, whatever, but I'm sorry. I have to give it two out of five Tapiong Skulls. So, it is now shout out time. time. Hey, yeah, nice. Uh, it's summer, uh, it's getting harder. People don't put things out in summer because I don't know, it's not Christmas? Is that a reason? It's just things, video games, music, this less stuff comes out in summer. I don't know why. But, despite that, we still have two great ones for you. If you are looking for something weird, it's a little different, Abyssal put out a beacon in the husk on Profound Lore Records last week. It's a super cool, like, ambient death metal-y thing, but not ambient in like a, well, that's nice way, ambient in like a, ah, way. Um, it's, they're from the UK, super cool. Definitely check that out. And also, hey, a cool thing, uh, Cryptos Afterburner came out on AFM Records last week as well. This is some really cool old school metal with an amazing cover uh, out of India. We love celebrating global metal here. So, hey, give uh, this band from India a check out. They've released a bunch of albums. They've all been great. This one's great too. Get on board. But other than that, I've been Blaine Smith. This has been another Overkill Reviews. Banger, Patreon, YouTube, subscribe. Peace. <laughs>